Hello, everyone. Welcome to the second episode of Mini Clinics with Mitch. My name is Mitch Braley. I'm a member of Racquetball Canada's national development team, and I'm coming to you from my basement on behalf of Racquetball Canada. Last week, we talked about goal setting and self-assessment. Uh, hopefully, you've had some time to sit down and work through a few of the exercises we looked at. But this week, our topic is something that is absolutely crucial in racquetball, yet is rarely practiced enough, and that is footwork. And I feel like it's a word many of us have come to dread. I know I have at times, but with a bit of perspective, we can see how vital it is to forming a solid racquetball game. So as an example, do you, do you know any players who, if we were judging them strictly based on their warm-up, would appear to be seasoned pros, but once they get into a game, everything seems to fall apart? And that might sound a bit dramatic, but there is a significant decrease from the skill level they exhibited during their drop and hits and easy feeds uh, compared to when they get into a match. Now, there are a number of reasons that can contribute to this that we'll be discussing in later videos, such as mental blocks or poor shot selection, but the biggest problem can likely be attributed to poor footwork. You can have the most picture-perfect swing in the world, doesn't matter if it's the forehand and or the backhand, but if you aren't able to get yourself into proper position to use them, then you're going to be hard-pressed to improve and win more matches. Now, what exactly do I mean when I say footwork? Essentially, I'm referring to anything dealing with movement patterns and approaches to the ball and the associated movement of your feet in order to do all of it properly. So quite simply, if you are on the move, then so are your feet and vice versa. So before we dive into a couple of the drills that I have for you, let's take a real brief look at some of the benefits of proper footwork. Uh, number one, it gets you in, into a better position to hit your shot, ensuring you can contact the ball in the best spot possible so you're not jammed or reaching too far forward or behind you. Uh, it will make you quicker, so proper footwork aims to reduce any unnecessary steps or strides that add inefficiencies into your game. So although you'll likely be slower while practicing it at first, once you develop the muscle memory, you're going to be much quicker, much more responsive, and much more efficient in your movement. And it also helps reduce injury because having poor footwork means you're going to be swinging and hitting the ball in positions that are unnecessarily stressful on your body. So the main areas we tend to think of are our knees and our backs, but this can also affect anything from your neck to your shoulder, your elbow, your hips, etc. And there's one phrase I really like to remember, and that is slow is smooth and smooth is fast. And it has its origins in the U.S. military. I think it's the Navy SEALs, but essentially it means practicing things slowly at first in order to develop the correct movement patterns uh, because rushing it and doing it wrong isn't going to do you any good. So as you start improving, you're naturally going to increase in speed until you'll be doing it during games without unnecessary movement or steps that only serve to slow you down. Uh, and the analogy I really like to think of is driving somewhere in your car without having paid close attention to the proper directions. So since you only have a rough idea where you're going, you're in a time crunch, you're speeding, you're slamming the gas pedal, you're trying to make up lost time while you miss turns and burn more gas than you need to, and eventually you're going to get to where you're going, but the process was stressful, you put more wear and tear on your vehicle than you should have, and you're late, but you still got to the same destination as somebody who took note of where they were going beforehand, planned their route, drove the speed limit, and had a smooth, stress-free trip to arrive on time. So what we're going to do is look at three exercises you can do at home to improve your footwork and keep it sharp. I'm going to let the first one play in the background here while I introduce them so you can take note if you'd like, and then I'll dive into what's going on here. So uh, the first one is a basic crossover. You don't need much space. I've got my racket in my hand for some of it, but you can ditch it if you need to. If you're pressed for space and don't want to mark your walls or knock pictures off your shelves, your desk, like I was doing before my girlfriend told me to change rooms. And I'm demonstrating both in the video here. So the drill itself is very simple. So with a small step, I'm opening up my foot to the side I'm going to be moving towards. So if I'm moving to the right, then we're talking about my right foot at first. I'm also prepping my racket and rotating my hips and shoulders into a good ready position. Next, I cross over, hence the name of the drill, with my opposite leg so that my feet end up as close to parallel as possible. Also note that my front toe is pointed in the direction I'm going to be hitting. We'll talk more about that momentarily. I return back to a good solid ready position in a neutral stance and athletic stance. And from here, I can either go to the opposite side or I can repeat doing the same side over and over and over. Uh, it really doesn't matter. That's your decision. And as you can see in the video, you have the option to take a practice swing as well 
if you have the space. If not, not a big deal because we're practicing the correct footwork to get into a good position to swing, and that's the core of this drill. I didn't have much room to swing here, uh, and this is hugely important, this drill, for being able to react and square to the ball quickly, and it's a very fundamental movement in racquetball. And so a few things to watch for here. I mentioned the toe point, and that is important for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, if your toe is closed, like I have in the bottom image here, it's going to prevent you from rotating through fully, and that's going to restrict your swing and reduce your power. Uh, but probably more importantly, is swinging like this repeatedly with your toes closed puts a lot of strain on your leg, in particular your knee and your ankle. I don't encourage you to test it out to, to try and feel the difference, but trust me when I say having a closed toe with your swing isn't going to do you any favors. Uh, but also, don't over exaggerate this toe point either like I have in the top image because that can be just as strenuous in the body and it doesn't permit great balance or preparation for your swing. So the second exercise we're going to look at is something that I started doing a few months ago because I didn't have enough space in my house to do a full star drill or even a mini star drill comfortably. And again, I'm just going to let it play in the background here before diving into detail as to what's going on. Um, but again, didn't have the space in my house. It was also minus 40 degrees. My backyard was covered in snow, so anything outdoors was pretty much off limits. And I call this the four point star drill. And I'm sure somebody out there has done this before and has a different name for it. But regardless, I really enjoy it. So I start off in the same neutral athletic stance as the crossover drill. Where you start isn't massively important, but I'd recommend doing the same pattern every time. So I like to start by moving forward on the forehand side. I begin with the same crossover that we already looked at, but this time I'm shuffling forward after I've done that. And note how early I'm prepared to hit the ball while moving. Once I've shuffled forward, I take a slow, smooth swing with good weight distribution onto my back legs so that I'm not falling forward and I'm really stable. Now my front foot stays in place and I rotate around with my back foot so that I've gotten back into a strong athletic stance. The space I'm working in is quite small and I can't move any further ahead, but this is fine because now I've got plenty of room to shuffle back. In a game situation, this would be similar to moving back to return a ceiling ball or some other type of shot that puts the ball deep in the court. And from my athletic stance again, I bring my right foot back so that I'm once again square to what would be the side wall if I were on a court, and I shuffle back. Again, my racket's up early, and while I'm moving, I don't want it down at my side. And once I've shuffled back, I take another slow, smooth swing. Like I did while moving forward, my balance is solid, and I swing my foot back to get that neutral athletic stance yet again. Now, I'm able to do the same motion on the backhand side. So I start with our basic crossover, I shuffle forward, swing, I'm stable, and I get into my athletic stance. Finally, I bring my left foot back this time, square up to what would be the side wall on a court, and shuffle back, finishing with a swing into an athletic stance. Now I'm back to where I started at the very beginning of the drill, and I can do it all over again. What I really like about this drill is it requires very little space, as you can see, but it allows me to practice some very fundamental movements that I'll be doing on the court. And if you'd like, you can just as easily throw in the crossover drill from before into this pattern. But I really like focusing on these four points and the proper footwork for all of them. So that's a lot of talking, but I really feel like looking at the videos here uh, also speaks for themselves. Uh, one other note, and you probably saw it there watching the video, but again, if you don't have the space, you don't need to do the swing when you go to all four of those points. I demonstrated a few times just to show you that, but you can get a ton of benefit from that uh, just by doing the footwork and focusing on that versus uh, introducing the swing as well uh, if you're worried about swinging inside. Uh, but again, make sure that that front toe is pointed just like we talked about for the crossover drill. The same is going to apply on the four-point drill. And although the movements are very simple, there are also a number of steps involved. So I've made sure to try and do it slowly in the video so you can track it, but you'll likely need to pause and replay multiple times as well. And make sure you start slowly too, focusing on correct form versus speed. The speed's gonna come naturally. And film yourself during the process as well, from your first few tries as you practice it regularly. It's likely you'll notice the number of steps or points where you feel off balance at first, and that's totally okay. And the final drill I have for today, uh, another really important piece of footwork is looking at how to properly finish your serve motion, whether it's a drive serve or a lob serve, it doesn't matter, and then get into a really good center court position. And it may seem silly, but practicing this motion is a great way to ensure you help your return to play go smoothly. 
Uh, here, I'm going to be simulating both a drive serve and a lob serve. Uh, if you'd like, you can place some tape on the ground to mark the service lines and center court location, but I had a pretty good idea where those might be. And this isn't a video on serving techniques, but the focus is going to be on the movement afterwards. So for the drive serve, I'm going through my entire pre-serve routine, or most of it. Uh, you can see I'm even pretending I'm bouncing the ball. Uh, and that preparation to simulate being on a court as best as possible. You can do this full speed with enough practice, but I'm going slowly to ensure it's very clear for this video and my form is proper and I don't really have the space uh, again to do it either. But I finished my swing on balance and I shuffled back to what would be center court, roughly a couple of feet behind the dotted line. I'm in the same athletic stance we've been seeing throughout the video, my racket's up and I'm looking back as if I'm watching an opponent ready to pounce on their return. Uh, I'm not facing perfectly forward to what would be the front wall, but rather I'm turned slightly to better track who I'm serving to. I can do the same drill as if I'm hitting the serve to the right side as well, which you can see in the video here. And for the lob serve, all the same aspects apply. So keep in mind it's important to follow through and finish your service motion before you move, just as you would if you were hitting a ball on a court. And if you did notice that I was doing some slipping and sliding around in that last video in particular, that's because my shoes are very old and my floor is dusty and wasn't very clean. So I do recommend giving it a quick sweep or a mop before you engage in some of these exercises if you got a hardwood or a laminate floor for your own safety. Uh, but there is no rule as to how you need to structure these training sessions. So even if you're doing this for a few minutes a day, these drills can be really beneficial for you. So feel free to have fun with them, try combining them, such as transitioning from the post-serve movement into the four-point star drill. Uh, there's no perfect substitute for being on an actual court, but there's also no reason to lose a step while they're closed. And these are just a few drills to keep you active and prepared for once courts reopen in your area. So uh, some of you may not have been able to play for nearly a full year, and this is a great way to get back into a groove and avoid that fish out of water feeling once you're back playing again. And for those of you who are lucky enough to have some court access right now or have had it for quite some time, these are still some really nice options that you can do regularly for even five to 10 minutes a day um, when you're getting home from work, even a few times a week to start seeing some improvements in your game. And just a really brief recap of what we looked at today. So improving your footwork is one of the best ways to improve your game and prevent injury. And don't worry about being fast at first, focus on smooth, proper form, and you'll be amazed at how fast you'll become in a really short period of time. Uh, watch out for that closed toe on your front foot. Keep it open to help prevent injury. Make sure your racket prep is solid, so having it down at your side builds really bad habits, especially come game time. Film yourself and review it. Are you taking extra steps? Are you preparing your racket in time or are you trying to go too fast? And having video of yourself that you can look back on is a really good way to make improvements even quicker and make adjustments as well. Uh, and it is difficult to replace on-court drills like I mentioned, but making the most of your situation is a great way to gain an advantage over your competition, a lot of whom are in the same boat as you. Uh, that's all I have for today though. Next week we're going to look at something that pairs really nicely with footwork and some of the stuff we talked about today and that's going to be quickness and agility. Again, my name is Mitch Braley with Racquetball Canada. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you all next week. Take care and stay safe.